Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Craig Barton. Now, I thought I'd go a little bit controversial for this week's Resource of the Week. After all, summer's on its way, I'm kicking back, so who cares? So this week's particular selection is called 30 Second Mental Maths Puzzle and it has been kindly uploaded by Mark Massey 88 Now, why is it controversial? It's because of this thing. 30 seconds. The idea of timing students to do mathematics, and in particular mental mathematics, has attracted some real controversy of late. Um, Joe Bowler sent a tweet out um, earlier on in 2018 and that really, really fired up uh, a lot of the UK maths community because she made the point that in the UK, um, teachers are putting students under timed pressure to do things and uh, Joe believes that this timed pressure leads to maths anxiety, puts students off maths and so on. And she's firmly of the belief that good mathematicians don't need to be quick at doing maths. And it was all kicking off and Joe retracted a tweet and said that her, her actual point was about the uh, national times tables test and so on and how she doesn't think they're a good idea. Now what's interesting about that is uh, following Joe's tweet, I was actually interviewing Dylan William for my Mr. Barton Maths podcast. Um, and I brought this up with Dylan and he said he, he fundamentally disagrees I and mean, he believes students need to be quick at doing mathematics because if you're quick, if you can automate key processes, so if you know, for example, 10% of 90 is nine like that without having to say, how do I find 10%? I need to divide by 10. How do I divide 90 by 10 and have these internal conversations? Dylan's point is, and this seems to be backed up by a lot of my reading of the cognitive science, in particular Sweller's work on cognitive load theory, is that those internal conversations are taking up space in working memory. And if we can ease the burden on working memory by getting as much of that automated so it can simply be retrieved from long-term memory like that, then students' working memory is, fill, is full, is, uh, sorry, is empty, there's enough capacity left for them to do more complex things like solve problems in context involving those kind of simple calculations as opposed to being bogged down in the minutiae of solving it. So they're the kind of two schools of thought. Some people think you need to be able to do maths quickly. It's an important thing. Some people believe that speed doesn't matter at all. And most people I reckon are somewhere in between. I certainly am, but I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna put my hands up here. I'm leaning more towards I want as much of the mental maths my kids do to be as automated as possible. So, I love this resource, but even if you hate it, if you hate the idea of this uh, 30 second thing, please bear with me because you don't have to use the timer. So, what does this resource look like? Well, it is a PowerPoint and it's just flipping brilliant. So essentially you've got 46 uh, maths puzzles that have been set up here. And I thought what we'd do, I think, I don't know if this is a first on the resource of the week, but I thought we'd do a live demonstration. So I'm actually gonna give you one of these to do. So if I just start it off like this, and if I go for number 19, um, so you can just get a sense of what these are like. I want you to start with 80, and I want you to follow through and do each of these calculations and see what you end up with. And your 30 seconds has already started. I don't know what I'm supposed to do for these 30 seconds. I'm just going to sit quiet and let you get on with it. Three, two, one, and you're done. Did you get the answer? Here it comes. 250. Now, what do I like about this resource? Well, first is the range of mental activities that are involved. So let's look at this one here. We've got multiply, we've got percentage of an amount. I like that, 39 extra. And that's a recurring theme throughout the resource that we use lots of different words to mean subtract, add, multiply, and divide. Take three, then we've got a square root, then we've got a fraction of an amount. I like this, multiply by 30. So seeing if students maybe multiply by three and then by 10 or however they do it add on 20, then we've got to add on 25%, so we've got percentage increase, and then we get our final answer. So loads of different math skills involved. Um, and that's true throughout all of these. So if I just show you a couple of the others, you'll see uh, this one involves money, 1%, take of a pound, four lots of, see what I'm saying there about using different vocab for the different operations. Uh, you'll get squares in there, halves, fractions, lots of percentages and so on. Loads and loads and loads of different ones of these. And, and as I say, there's a couple of 
options here. You can use 45 uh, seconds, you can use 60 seconds, or you can just scrap the timer altogether. And one tip I've used, um, one strategy I should, I should say, that I've used when I want to remove the time element but still get a sense of when students have finished, is I say, okay, as soon as you've finished, can you just put your pencil down so I know you've finished? And then as I look around the class, whenever about half the people have got the pencils down, I tend to say, okay, 10 seconds to go, everybody. And that just get gives, that that's just my strategy that seems to get the majority of students to a point where they've almost finished without making some students who finish early wait too long, if, if that makes sense. So I love these. I just love these for testing a range of these uh, these mental skills, and there's loads of them. So how do we best use them? Well, for me, these are best served as a starter. I mean, no prizes for that, that amazing insight. But it's just a great way to, to start a lesson to get students' brains warmed up. Um, and particularly if you're gonna be doing some work that involves these particular skills, so perhaps you're moving on to more complex percentages or you're doing something with fractions. I think the technical term for this is priming. It just activates the part of long-term memory where fractions or percentage knowledge is stored. And it just, like I said, it warms students up by activating that the part of their brain that they're gonna be using for the rest of the lesson. Um, and I just think it's just, if done in a in a non-pressured way, I just think this is quite a fun resource and useful resource. I'd never be saying, right, you've got 30 seconds and if you get it wrong, you're in detention or anything like that. And I wouldn't be collecting in marks or seeing who got it right or anything like that. I'd just be saying, okay, just a little competition for yourself. How far along this chain can you get in 30 seconds? Make a little note of it. And then next time, see if you can get a bit further and just setting students their own little challenges like that. So I don't think this needs to become the high stakes, time pressured thing that probably could lead to maths anxiety. Anyway, I absolutely love this resource. I think it's superb. It's a key part now of my starter arsenal. I like to use one of these a week. And because of the size of these, that's a whole year's worth that you can use and then go back to the start next year. So just wonderful stuff. If you use these, hop back onto the resource page, uh, get it downloaded, leave a review, because I think this is absolutely superb. And I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.